Fury time. I got a massive fury I want to talk about right now. Like, after reading this chapter and after looking at the color page of this chapter, I got a massive fury. Like, I straight up want to mention a fury. Now, it's been a little bit since I've actually brought up a really big fury, and I just want to take the time to mention this because after thinking about the last chapter of Boku no Hero Academia and been looking at this chapter, I've been looking at the color page of that and already showing factors that from the last chapter that the mangaka is already doing foreshadowing, I'm willing to bet something that what I'm about to say might be slightly true. So, anyways, let's start on the fury that I'm going to bring up. Izuku confronts All Might and talks about what he saw when he fought in the last battle, in the last chapter. He confronts All Might and says, like, I saw eight to nine people, and I saw someone that looks similar to you too, All Might. And All Might kind of, you know, makes it slide to where, like, oh no, it's just, you know, you're finally integrating with one for all, and you were just using your own willpower to use your strength. So you're the one that, you know, got out of that battle safe and sound and used your own power. It was your own body and your own will, and that this one for all ability will not have these other people mess with you and control you and all that. They don't have their own will. So, pretty much All Might was trying to let us know that there is no other person inside of you, Izuku. Like, there, there are those other people you saw are not real people, they're not going to interfere with you, you were just using your mind because you had a strong will and imagination to overcome your enemy in the last battle. That's what All Might was saying, but after that was done, you see Recovery Girl and All Might have a quick panel. It's a quick panel, you can think nothing of it, but it's clear something is indicating that there's something very suspicious or shady going on. For instance, you have it to where, like, Recovery Girl says to All Might after Izuku leaves room, like, he saw you. And then All Might looks aside, and you see how the panel changes in tone. Like, you could feel the tone shift in that panel. And he's like, yeah, it's a good thing. So, here's the fury. Now let's get into my fury. Why would All Might say it's a good thing that he is there amongst everybody else that Izuku saw? Like, why would All Might say that? Like, why? Why would he say something like that? That sounds very serious. There, there's different ways this can go. For one, maybe these other people that, you know, are a part of One for All or once had One for All, we already know they were the people that had One for All, it's kind of obvious. Well, what if these other people can kind of, you know, come out when they want, depending on certain emotions or the strength of the user, and they can take control of someone's mind for temporarily? Maybe that's what All Might is fearing. But these guys are heroes, supposedly. Now, here is where I lead into my main fury. What if One for All was actually a villain's technique. Think about that. What if One for All and all those people we saw in the background, you know, in the last chapter, was villains? And All Might, for some reason, we don't know much about All Might. Like, we don't know nothing about his childhood. I don't think we know much at all, next to nothing. And what if All Might was raised by a villain? And it turned into be wanting to, wanting to be the greatest hero of all time. He got one for all and he used it as a hero type te uh, technique. Like he turned into a hero. Wouldn't that be crazy and mind blowing if all those people that Izuku saw were villains. And that's why All Might is scared. Because if they can interfere with your will. That would mean they might be able to corrupt you and turn you into a villain or maybe an anti-hero. And maybe that's why All Might is happy he was seen there. Because if he wasn't seen, Izuku would have to face those guys by himself. Or girls' guys by himself. And that would mean that, you know, he has All Might on his side. You see what I mean? Interesting. Very, very interesting. You want to know why I got this fury? Like, what really spawned this fury to? It was the cover. The cover page, I saw a couple days ago, and actually looking at it and reading this chapter and thinking about what All Might said... The cover page is kind of like a homage to Kaneki Kim. If you know Tokyo Ghoul, Kaneki with his white hair, I and mean, he was once had solid black hair because, you know, he was once a human and then turned into a ghoul and stuff like that, and he got white hair, Kaneki, stuff like that. Well, if you know Tokyo Ghoul and you know Kaneki, you'll instantly, instantly notice the similarities of Todoroki in this chapter's cover page. The cover page is a homage to... Tokyo Ghoul. It straight up is. It's, it's Kaneki. Because I remember in the past, you had it to where Ashida sensei he, he did a reference to Boku no Hero Academia. He drew Boku no Hero Academia. Like, he did a picture or whatever and did a reference to it. And I know for a fact that probably the writer of Boku no Hero Academia is probably 
kind of playing homage to respect what Ishida Sensei did to him, and probably put Todoroki as kind of like a similar character design as Kaneki. But it's really weird how this character design that looks very similar to Kaneki, and if you look at the way the actual cover page is done, it's a similar body movement as Kaneki. Like, it's the exact same way Kaneki carries himself when he had wild white-haired Kaneki. And so when he saw that, I'm like, whoa, like... Yo, is this telling us that maybe Todoroki's gonna go that path? Or, are those people inside of Izuku's One for All gonna be different personalities for Izuku? Like, what if Izuku gets corrupted or manipulated by these other personalities and he turns evil or something because of all these different people inside of him that might be villains? See what I mean? So, it, it, it's plausible. We don't know. I mean, it, it, it's possible. It's a theory. You could say I might be stretching it and reaching, but I mean, it, it's a theory, and it does seem like it could be possible. We'll have to see. So let's dive into the details of this uh, chapter of Boku no Hero Academia. So we have it to where um, Izuku, after he, he's done confronting, you know, All Might about the situation, we get to move into the next fight between Todoroki and this other dude. And this other dude, I don't know his name exactly, sorry if I forgot, he gets completely wrecked. Like, he, he just gets destroyed. Like, it, it, it's not even a fight. Like, seriously, it, it was obvious Todoroki would win, but my god, man. Like, Todoroki, dude. Like, he, his ice just went over the stadium. It went over the fucking stadium. And he wrecked this poor dude. Like, oh my god. Like, the dude didn't stand a chance. He did not stand a chance at all. He got destroyed. Oh my god, it's just like, that, that's pretty much the sum of the ending part of the chapter. Like, Todoroki just destroyed that dude. And he says, like, I'm sorry, I was kind of pissed. This leads into seeing more dialogue between Todoroki and his father, and how the father was kind of giving us some foreshadowing of saying, like, eventually there's going to come a time to when you're going to be forced to use your fire side. And you might be able to get through through high school like you're doing now, but eventually it'll come a time where you'll have to use the fire side of yourself. So a little bit of foreshadowing right there that, you know, Todoroki's father did in this chapter of Boku no Hero Academia. That's pretty much it. So tell me your thoughts in the comments below. Y'all have a wonderful day or night wherever you live. Please be safe. Chibi out.